of just you know just just harnessing some sharks and they're pulling that that that, that art all over creation. I love it. I love it. But there probably is no story that's more endearing. How many of you saw Evan Almighty, the movie? Wasn't that a good movie? Yeah. We love those movies, don't we? We love those movies because we're talking about God as though God were real. I thought that is what we thought. We love those movies because it really does give us that sense of warm fuzziness. And we see God win. You know, we see Evan and God and they win. It's like, yes. And yes, that's exactly what we talk about every Sunday morning. That's exactly what we talk about. And this story today is so important because this is God's first promise. I don't know if you realize that or not. But this is God's first promise in the Bible. You heard us tell the story. You remember Noah and all the other folks that were around in that time had gotten themselves into an incredible mess. You ever been there? Are we there? <coughs> have you ever been there? You ever gotten yourself in more of a mess than you ever could have imagined? Anybody with me there, or is it just me? You're going to leave me hanging out there on that one. I see. All right. Just be that way then. Okay. So there's just a few of us then have ever gotten ourselves in more of a mess than we could ever have imagined. All right. We can live with it that way. I don't mind. All right. But for the rest of you then that might get there someday, this is going to be good news for you too. All right? Someday, if you ever find yourself there. Because it was the, it was the situation where literally... We had taken what God had created it and we had turned it into a septic system. That's basically what we had done in Noah's day. We had taken the Garden of Eden and all the rest of creation and through our own devices had turned the world into one big septic tank. Now God had two choices at that point. God could have flushed and that would have been the end of us. Or God could say, you know what? I started with dirt. I can start with this junk too. And I can recreate. And that's really what the story of Moses is about. Is God saying that I love you enough that instead of flushing, I'm going to recreate. And so we have this wonderful story then of the rains and God cleansing the earth. And God then starting all over again with a new Adam, Noah. And there he is. And they, they come out of the boat. And he and God decide, all right, we're, we're going to have a, we're going to have a, uh, we're going to have a powwow here. And God says, Noah, I, I'm going to put my post-it note in the sky. Instead of on the refrigerator, I'm going to put it in the sky. And I'm going to put this rainbow up here. And every time I see that rainbow, I'm going to remember. And you see, this is where I kind of interpret the story a little bit. Because the Bible says, God says, you know, this is where I'm going to remember, oh yeah, I said I would never destroy them with water again. See, I don't see that as the point of the story. What I see the point of the story is that this isn't a promise about God saying, I'm not going to destroy it. This is a promise of God saying, I'm going to go the road with you. That's what this rainbow is about. It's not simply God saying, oh, no, 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 don't worry, you know, this flood stuff, I'm not going to do this again. This is God's way of saying, I promise I will go with you through all of this thick and thin forever. And that's the first we have in this promise. And how critical it really and truly is then. Now, have you ever stopped to think for a moment about the reason and purpose of a promise? You ever stop to think about that? Now, we tend to focus a lot about what happens when promises are broken and all of the hurt and the disappointment and things of that nature that happen when promises are broken. But I want you to go before that a little bit, okay? Can you ask yourselves, what is the purpose and the power of a promise in the first place? Let's try it this way, for example. All right, let's pretend that all of us are going to go to work tomorrow morning, and we're going to work all week long, and then Friday comes, and they're going to hand us our paycheck. And we say, okay, fine, great. I'm going to go home, I'm going to spend the weekend, then the next Monday I'm going to go back to work again, and I'm going to work the whole week. Friday comes, and the boss says, you know, I'm sorry, we don't have a paycheck for you this week. But come back to work Monday. 
And you're like, okay. So you go back to work Monday, you work all week, Friday comes, boss gives you a paycheck. You say, thanks boss, appreciate that, appreciate that. Come back to work Monday, you work all week, you get a paycheck on Friday, come back next week, you work on Friday, you work Monday through Friday, Friday comes, you don't get a paycheck. Come back to work on Monday. You go to work on Monday, you work till Friday, no paycheck. 